All right, first thing to address. I hit 10,000 subs. Thank you guys so, so very much. I never in a million years would have ever imagined I would have ever gotten past like the first 20 or 30 subs that I had that all absolutely hated me. So those of you guys who have stuck around with me, I really, really greatly appreciate it. Um, I really honestly have no words. So before we dive into the TAC-13, let's look at the 14. Yes, this weapon is hot. I literally just pulled this from my front door. Some of you guys have picked this up in other videos before where I was walking around my house. Um, there is a shell on the carrier, ready to go. It sits muzzle up next to the door, so if you were to grab it and lift the weapon up, it would, in fact, chamber that round. So I get asked the question a lot. What do you choose as far as a shotgun goes, pump or semi-auto? 99.9% .9 of the time it's gonna be pump, simply for the fact that there's more reliability. Um, that is kind of like the staple of truth with anything. Wheel gun versus semi-auto. Pump versus semi-auto. Um, for me, pump shotguns are always going to be my go-to as far as home defense goes. Now that said, I'm not really discrediting a semi-auto. Uh, as you guys know, Benelli M4 is by far my favorite shotgun of all time, and I've shot and featured that gun in several videos. So when the TAC-14 came out, it was kind of like, meh. It's four plus one, if you feel brave enough to have around in the chamber of a shotgun. I personally do not. Um, I will have one damn close though. So four plus one, so this only has five, ready to go. So one thing that kind of sucks is this, as you guys know, is not a shotgun, it's not a pistol, it's not a rifle. According to the ATF, this is a firearm. Now, this one in Washington state is still a firearm. You cannot conceal this. For some reason, with the TAC-13 V3, they decided, hey, this, uh, yeah, this is a pistol. Despite what federal regulations say, Washington state, in all of its communist glory, has classified the TAC-13 as a pistol. What does that mean? Well, I can conceal it. Truth be told to all of you guys, I have one of these in the back of literally every vehicle that I own. This is one of the greatest get out of Dodge, get yourself to a safe place, if you're stuck somewhere, you can hunt. If something's going on, you have at least five shots of 12 gauge, which is nothing to scoff at. However, that is not without its drawbacks. At a price point of just under $500, it's one of those can't really beat it kind of things. And I chose this over the Mossberg just because I don't like Mossberg. I will always be a Remington guy. Remington is just one of those very beloved names here in the Havoc household. So. Um, I wasn't going to go Mossberg, even though they have the strap thing. Um, so, if I'm being 100% honest with you guys, this thing absolutely sucks to shoot. Um, you're shooting it from your hip, you're shooting it relatively inaccurately. If you try and hold it up to your cheek, good luck. Um, three inch mag slugs or a double out buck, you're going to have a bad day. Um, I never personally hit myself with this, and I'm being very careful. Um, and I am going to put my finger inside the trigger guard, but you see that the action is in fact open. The problem that I had is when I was pulling the trigger, my hand would slide forward and I would smash my finger into the inside of the trigger guard. No matter how, no matter how hard I grip this damn thing, and that's another thing too, is if you modify this, you could be changing it to an AOW. So I wasn't even going to try, I'm just leaving this as it is, not even going to stipple it, nothing. Um, I don't mess around with the ATF, and I don't want them to mess around with me. So, um, pretty much no matter how hard you grip this, your hand's sliding forward and you're going to smash your knuckles into things. And this, without that strap, um, it was kind of lacking. But overall, I would say I've probably put close to a thousand rounds of birdshot through this, maybe 200 rounds of buck, and probably a few hundred slugs. Um, just to make sure that everything was going to cycle and function fine. This is one of those guns that you have to mean it when you shoot it, otherwise it's coming out of your hands. And, again, it's just not comfortable. That, however, is just kind of the nature of the beast. If you look at the other side of this, you'll see that it still says Remington 870. Even the Remington 870 still hurts to shoot 3-inch mag. Yeah, I know, you're super tough, it doesn't hurt you, but you cannot beat physics you're still pushing an ounce or more of lead out of this barrel at X amount of feet per second and all of that energy, guess what, is going back. So eventually, yeah, it's gonna start hurting. 
So the TAC-14, for what it was, was cool. Now, having it loaded inside of a car is illegal. Um, I'm just going to leave it at that. Having this sitting by my door, very small, unobtrusive, kind of hard to see. This would be a very quick weapon to bring into action should you not have another firearm on you when you answer the door to whatever may be going on. So last little bit on the TAC-14. Uh, it's totally worth the money, even though it is limited in capacity as is this, but that said, these things are pretty dang cool, and the fact that they aren't an AOW, you do not need a tax stamp, and they are just a firearm. Um, it's pretty neat. Moving on to the star of the show. The Remington V3 TAC-13. Into the box we go. See, this even says, qualifies as a quote-unquote firearm. Now, Washington State classifies this as a pistol. I had to give my concealed pistol license to be able to buy this. So that means, if I had to do that, then I should damn well be able to conceal it. And I intend to. Whether that may be a no-no or not, well... I had two police officers inside of Rainier Arms who worked there tell me that it was in fact the case. This is technically a pistol in Washington State. Um, I'm going to quote them. And if anyone who pulls me over has a problem with it, they're going to get a phone call. Looking at the manual, a whole bunch of safety stuff. Remington... Remington kind of had a bad start with their 700s. There was a couple of uh, weapons that went off unintentionally. And some people got killed and... If you guys don't know the history behind the Remington 700, it's a, kind of a bloody sad history actually. But um, anyways, so this is showing our gas pistons and all that stuff. It's not going to be anything cool like the Argo system and the Benelli's, but uh, for what it is, it's going to be good enough. So just a typical manual of what you would expect from a mass manufactured weapon, printed on gloss paper, but kind of crappy images. Here we have a... A uh, piece of a pick rail and a sling stud. Tiny little cable lock. Don't see that every day. And moving this aside, if there's anything else hidden in here, a lot of foam. Okay. Let's move this out of the way and you guys get to stare at my carpet, which some of you love, some of you hate, and I don't really care. So here we have, as per usual, panning view. This is the V3 TAC-13. QD mount in the back. Very smart of them, thank you for doing that. Overall, very, very cool looking weapon. I have to admit, I wasn't initially super excited about the fact that they had ribs on top of the barrel, but now that I see it, I'm like, okay, it works. Now something that you'll notice here is we have that one round extension. So in comparing this to the TAC-14, you'll see where they get that extra round. So this is in fact five plus one. All right, let's get this weapon out of the way. It's hot, it's making me uncomfortable, and uh, I don't want to shoot my couch. So, so with this, we have a much beefier handguard, a lot more texture to it than the Magpul one that comes with the TAC-14, and we have a beautiful strap. I'm actually really excited about this strap. Something else you can probably see from the get-go is we have a very bright follower to tell us, hey, this weapon is in fact empty. We are very, very clear. Very clear. Got a little carried away, okay. So being a semi-auto, the first question we would ask ourselves is how is the action? It's very smooth. Um, it's obviously going to be every bit as smooth as its full-size counterpart. And again, we are clear. That was the trigger. I'm gonna guess it feels like a shotgun. Yep, it does. And let's feel it again. 
it's actually a pretty good trigger. Not that that's really going to matter. And again, that goes behind the whole philosophy of why you would have this. This is going to be a from the side, just blasting people away kind of gun. This isn't going to be your shooting clays or hunting gun. This is strictly for home, personal, and vehicle defense. And again, this in Washington State is now classified as a pistol. So yeah, um, I'm going to take full advantage of that. Single bead is our front sight. I have no intention of putting an optic on here. They do give you a tapped spot for a rail on the top. I'm not even going to bother because again, you're probably going to be shooting this from the hip or, you know, mid to high chest area. And even if you did hold it up like a shotgun, um, it's going to be, you know, point and shoot kind of thing anyways. And I'm sure you'd probably be able to hit steel with this offhand at 50 yards or less. Um, I don't see why you wouldn't. Always a fan of the anti-glare ribbing on top of my skeet guns, and as far as a tactical gun, um, actually I will give it the benefit of the fact that when you are looking down the ribs, it makes the bead stand out that much more. I mean, take that for whatever it's worth. This for me is just going to be a boof, boof, boof kind of gun. And yes, those are the sounds that it makes, boof, boof, boof. Looking through on the features, this is going to be a cross block or cross bolt safety. Um, plastic trigger guard, we get a little, I'm gonna guess actually if you push this down, it's going to make it easier by pushing down on this to extract your shells. So if you have to unload it, you don't have to cycle the action. Um, that's gonna be my guess and I'm, I'm sticking to it. I'm probably wrong, but. So let's talk about the prohibitive parts of this gun. It is expensive. The MSRP on this is $919.99. When I was finding these in stock, and I did find them in stock, uh, Rainier Arms actually has them right now. Um, not for long. So, um, so when I did find these in stock, they were going for about $850, which is what Rainier Arms is charging. I think it was right around $850. And they are in stock right now, so if you guys want one, Snag one, pick it up, tell them I sent you. Maybe they'll give me a sticker or something. Um, so that obviously is going to be the first thing. This is going to be cost prohibitive at just under a thousand bucks. After tax, it's gonna be right around 900 and change. So um, it is expensive. However, for me in Washington state, this went from ATF's ruling of firearm to pistol. Proof that if you live in a communist state, they can change laws however they see fit. So. I can conceal this. Thank you, Washington. You fucked up. Um, further than that, here is our biggest benefit and also our biggest drawback. You have an action that cycles. So why is that a big deal? Unlike a pump action, where you literally take all of the recoil, 100% of it, minus the weight of the gun, which isn't much, on a semi-auto, you have, well, you guessed it, a semi-automatic action that's going to take some of the brunt of that recoil. And yes, it is going to make it softer shooting. By how much? Mm, I mean, a bit. And I'll take anything I can get. So, um, enough that it was worth it for me. Let's put it that way. Um, further than that, what else are we getting? Well, obviously, semi-auto, it's going to be able to shoot a hell of a lot quicker. And again, being semi-auto, semi-autos inherently, and this isn't just shotguns, but semi-autos inherently are less reliable than something that is actuated manually, such as a pump or a revolver. You just can't beat that. It's, it, it is an absolute truth. That's not to say that pumps don't fail. That's not to say that revolvers don't fail, but I would trust a pump action more than I would trust a semi-auto, especially when it comes to a shotgun. So that's just kind of my summary of this gun. I really, really dig it. I wish I would have got another one. Um, it's kind of up to you guys to decide if it's worth 900 bucks to you. If so, I definitely say it's worth it. Haven't even shot it yet, but I know Remingtons and they do in fact run and they run extremely well. Something else I want to talk to you guys about. I'm doing a 10,000 subscriber giveaway. What does that mean? Well, I want to do something to give back to you guys um, especially the ones who actually interact with me in comments and who have positive or at least constructive things to say. 
I'm all for criticism, so long as it's constructive and so long as it's actually helping other people learn and so long as you're actually right. People give me criticism all the time and they think that they're right, but they're completely wrong and I could cite them. But besides the point, anyways, so I want to do a giveaway. I'm going to do a giveaway on an AR build. Now I need your guys' ideas on something. No, I'm not doing a scar. No, I'm not doing any name brand anything. I'm going to build something. The only constraint here is whoever wins the build, it has to be legal in their state. So I'm going to be doing a build of this AR and I'm going to give options just in case it happens to land in, let's say, California or New York or some ultra prohibitive state. I want to make sure whoever wins gets it. So I'm not only doing an AR, I will have a backup gun as well. I need your guys' ideas of what to buy as a backup gun should somebody who wins be in a communist state. And go. Also, really quickly, the rules to this are going to be very simple. One, you have to be subscribed. Two, you have to have liked this video. Three, you have to be of legal age in a legal state. And number four, when you send your information to me, I'm going to run a background check on you. And even if you aren't a felon, if I see anything to do with drugs, if I see anything to do with any form of domestic abuse, you lost. So those are the rules, plain and simple. Don't be a drug addict, don't be a wife beater, and be legal, essentially. That's pretty much it, other than subscribe and like. So I was really excited to get this video out to you guys. I'm finally back to good health. I'm no longer sick. My wife, however, unfortunately, is still a little bit sick. My bad. Um, and further than that, we've been snowed in for like the past three and a half days. We finally got the roads clear enough to be able to drive for me to pick this up today, but it's going to be like 18 degrees here and snow for the next five consecutive days, so I'm not going to be able to get to the range anytime soon. So I'm going to get this video uploaded now. It is Tuesday the 5th. You guys are going to see this the same day. I have absolutely nothing better to do other than upload this for you. I just had a change of thought. I'm going to build the AR, and I'm also going to buy a to give to someone who lives in a communist state who otherwise wouldn't be able to own an AR. And I'm actually going to give the winner, should they live in a free state, the choice between the two. One of them is going to be something that's bought, that has nothing to do with me, that I didn't build. And the other one is going to be the AR build that we do in a video together. And you guys will see me shopping for the parts. I'm gonna make a whole big deal of it. And I'm super excited to do the build. So because this video is listed as the 10,000 subscriber giveaway video, I don't want you thinking that I'm giving away this shotgun, but I'm not going to leave you with nothing. I am going to be giving away the MOE-K. I know, boo, $15 grip. And the Geisley SDSSP, the single stage precision. If you guys have ever wanted the most perfect single stage trigger in the entire world, this is it. So I want to give this away and share this with one of you guys. Um, the first person to comment uh, the closest to my birthday, the day and month, is going to win both of these. And once somebody gets it, it's going to say in the description that the grip and trigger have been won and there will be no more injuries. Sound like I'm conducting a circus. Anyways, uh, so that's going to wrap up this video. Again, thank you so much, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video on the TAC-13, the V3. I don't know if there was a V1 or 2, or I just know that this is a V3 TAC-13. And I'm excited about it, and Washington State fucked up by saying that this was a pistol, because I'm fully intending on concealing this. Love you guys. See you in the next one. And again, I want to hear your input.